Love has the power of uniting and transforming. It transforms the one who loves into him who is loved, and him who is loved into him who loves. Each passes into the other as far as it is possible. Consider the intelligence. How completely love transforms the loved one into him who loves. With what sweetness and delight the one lives in the memory of the other, and how earnestly the lover tries to know, not superficially but intimately, all that concerns the object of his love, and strives to enter as far as possible into his inner life. Think next of the will, by which also the loved one lives in him who loves. Does he not dwell in him by that tender affection, that sweet and deeply rooted joy which he feels? On the other hand, the lover lives in the beloved by the sympathy of his desires, by sharing his likes and dislikes, his joys and sorrows, until the two seem to form but one. Since love is strong as death, it carries the lover out of himself into the heart of the beloved and holds him prisoner there. The soul is more truly where it loves than where it gives life, since it exists in the object loved by its own nature, by reason and will. Whilst it is in the body, it animates only by bestowing on it an existence which it shares with the animal creation. There is, therefore, but one thing which has power to draw us from outward objects into the depths of our own souls, 